everyone, this is Lisa Mendoza and I have another tutorial for you. This time we're going to be sewing just a little bit, so this is just fine for beginners. And we're going to be using a product called Craftex. I am a big fan of this. I'm so excited. So if any of you are familiar with Levi jeans, Okay, just think Levi jeans, think on the back side, up towards the waist, there's usually this label and it has the, the waist size and the length of the Levi jeans. Anyway, it's this stuff. It is a paper product that can be sewn and washed and dried um, just like fabric. But it is actually a paper product. It's very interesting. So you probably remember that, you know, that rectangular, um, um, tag on the back and you could rip off the little side thing. Anyway, um, that's Craftex. This is a different color. This is a gray Craftex, but um, typically you're probably used to the more um, kind of camel color, um, cognac type color um, Craftex. I have that too, but for today's tutorial, I'm going to use this gray. Um, it's really pretty. Um, other colors that Craftex comes in is black, um, this kind of taupey gray that I'm using, the cognac, um, white, and I can't, I think the white is more of an off-white. I have it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I have every color that Craftex makes because it's amazing. So you can start off by going ahead and putting your Craftex in the washer and it gives it a nicer, softer feeling than what I have here. Right now, my paper is rolling all over the place <laughs> because it's pretty firm, but I wanted to go ahead and start out with um, this firm Craftex because I find it's easier to sew. So um, I'm just gonna lay it on its backside, that way it'll start stop curling on me. I'm going to use um, the black craft text and then my Cricut blade holder <laughs> as a as a weight. I do have pattern weights, but I just don't feel like getting them out of the drawer. I'm kind of on a roll here and um, I want to get this craft text cut. So um, now my best friend, she had asked me, she goes, so do I use fabric scissors or do I use paper scissors on the craft text? And that's a really good question. Um, I mean, my my guess is you can just use either one. Um, I guess if I were being really specific, I would probably use paper only because this is considered a paper product and not a fabric um, product. But um, actually all of my rotaries are dull and need a blade change. So I'm just gonna use what I grab first. Um, I have to change the blade anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I guess if I did have um, a choice, I would go with paper instead of um, fabric scissors. So I'm just going to grab a piece of butcher paper because I am just um, winging this. I'm not bringing out a ruler. I'm not doing any specific measurements or anything like that. I'm literally taking this butcher paper. I'm folding it um, in somewhat thirds, not really thirds because it's kind of shaped like an envelope. You can see here the top flap is a little shorter and I'm just kind of drafting um, the envelope shape. And I know my camera position isn't perfect, but I'm wearing one of those silly neck things with my cell phone on it. <laughs> so I don't get the, gr the best um, video of this, but you're gonna get my idea and I'll go ahead and um, walk you through. So I was just thinking, okay, what size do I want the envelope? And really it doesn't matter unless you wanna put it in one of your planners or you're trying to build storage for a specific item them. I'm just kind of going for it. So I'm just, I'm just doing whatever, whatever comes to mind. I'm just trying to get this tutorial done. Um, so I'm folding the mocked envelope <laughs> in half just so I know where the center is. And then I'm doing some fold marks for that deep V in the envelope flap, in the pouch flap. So um, I kind of mess around, kind of mess around trying to figure it out. Um, but I'll get there. All right, a little folding here, a little folding there, a little real folding here, refolding there. <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm getting there. All right, so I'm there now, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this um, because I, I didn't wanna get confused by the various um, fold marks. So I'm like, okay, I need to cut this so I can make some sense of it. So I'm just gonna cut this now that um, I know where I'm going with it. And I'll have my pattern already made. So um, 
Again, I didn't go with very specific measurements. I just took a piece of butcher paper and just went for it. So now for the curve of this envelope flap, I just take something round. It could be a plate. I'm taking that tape. That tape is just a little too round. The radius is a, a little too round. So I'm just taking my Fabri-Tac glue and I'm drawing around that curve on that peak. I know my camera angle stinks. I'm so sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so um, I'm just drawing that there and that'll help me with um, that curve. And um, that's just how I do it. Sometimes I'll take a quarter or you know something like that just to help me with that curve. Now you can leave the curve, uh, I mean you can leave that part with a, um, a sharp um, um, angular shape. It doesn't have to be curved. I kind of like the curving, but when it comes to sewing, it is a little more difficult to go around that curve. So um, again, I'm using my very, very fancy um, pattern making weights, <laughs> aka Cricut blade housing. <laughs> anyway, I'm just putting this down on my craft text. And then I'll take a straight ruler and I will go ahead and cut this. Now, I just wanna warn you in advance again, my blade is dull, so it skips, skips on a couple of places, um, but that's all right, I'll make do. And then once I get this all cut up, I will go ahead and meet you at the sewing machine. All right, we're getting closer and closer, but before I proceed any further, I wanna let you know, please leave a gap here where um, the envelope folds over. You wanna make sure not to get that midline of the envelope. You don't wanna get that too close to that um, fold over crease because then it's not gonna fold over very easily. You wanna make sure and give that a little bit of room. I only gave it like, um, I would say a quarter of an inch or maybe even a, le a little bit less than that. Um, but I did want to make sure that I mentioned that. Okay, so I'm just getting this positioned where it needs to be. And I'll be perfectly honest, I'm having a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and the reason why is because, remember how I used my butcher paper as a pattern, as a really quick pattern? Um, that butcher paper, I just tore it off the butcher paper dispenser. So my... Um, my lines are not parallel. They're not even on the right and left-hand side of the envelope. So that's why I was having a little bit of trouble there. So, um, but it, this is such a simple project that it can be very easily fixed. Even after you sew it, you can trim the edges so that they match up. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but that is the reason why you see me um, struggling matching those up. But now I'm just taking my bone folder, making sure that I have some nice creases because it's gonna make it easier for me to sew. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head over to the sewing machine. Hello, baby lock soprano, my pretty little baby. <laughs> I am so happy to be sewing. Even though this is gonna be a very, very short session at the sewing machine, I'm still so happy to be here. So here I am, I'm changing my thread. Just so you know, always bring your thread through the machine, through the needle, um, towards you. You never wanna pull it out from the thread spool. You always want to make sure it's going in the direction that it normally does when you're sewing so that you don't um, mess up your tension discs. So always pull the thread out from the needle towards you, not by picking up the thread and then pulling it in reverse out of the sewing machine. So I just want to make sure and add that tip. And then um, I had to wind a, bi a bobbin because I had black bobbin thread in the machine and I wanted to use this really, really um, pretty, very, very pale pink. Um, again, I'm using that um, kind of grayish, topish type um, craft text color. And so I thought adding pink will be a really nice touch to kind of give it a little bit of a vintage feel. I don't know exactly what I'm going for at this point, but this very, very light pink thread um, seemed like a good idea. So just got to quickly um, put together a bobbin. You do want your bobbin and your top thread to match when you're doing this project because both threads are going to be visible on both sides of the envelope. So um, typically I sew with um, white bobbin thread because you don't 
see it that often in sewing projects, but with this one, it's gonna be visible, so make sure that you use um, matching threads on the top and the bottom. All right, so we're ready to drop in the pretty blush pink bobbin. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll get to sewing. I do wanna make sure that my settings are right. Um, we're gonna do just a regular um, straight stitch, but there are a couple of things to note when um, sewing on Craftex. Um, because it's, it's very much like paper, you don't wanna perforate it too much with your needle. So use a smaller needle size if you can, and then what you wanna do is decrease the length of your stitch. So for a straight, straight stitch, we don't have to worry about the width. Um, your width on your sewing machine is just gonna determine the position of your needle. So we don't have to worry about that. You can just leave that um, at whatever's default for your sewing machine. But for the length, we want to increase that, and I'm gonna do that in just a bit. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and secure the sides with some wonder clips. Um, Sometimes I do use straight pins in my sewing projects, but for this, we don't want to puncture it. <laughs> so we don't want to use straight pins on this. So if you don't have wonder clips, you can always use binder clips or even paper clips um, if you have those. So again, I'm having trouble lining it up because I'm trying to line up the edge, the, the left and right front and back edge, and it's not working because they're not, um, they're not parallel. They're not straight because I I didn't use <laughs> a straight edge for my pattern. So I'm struggling a little bit, but that's all right, I'll get it. Once you do have it in place um, and learn from my mistake, don't just rip off a piece of paper and expect it to be even. But anyway, um, once you do get it into place, just secure it with some Wonder Clips. Um, wonder Clips are really great because they don't damage um, whatever material you're using, especially for vinyl or, um, or craft tags and things like that that you don't want to pierce. So we'll just get a couple of these clips on here, and then um, again, like I said, I'll adjust my machine, adjust the strength, uh, the uh, stitch length, and then we'll get to sewing. Another thing that I wanted to note is when you do get to sewing, be very careful when you're locking in your stitch. You do want to do a back stitch for sure when you start and when you finish, but you want to be careful because you don't want um, to again, perforate this material too much to where it's gonna tear off like a paper ticket. <laughs> you don't wanna do that. So be very careful down here. We're gonna go up here, around the top of the envelope, just like that, and then back down and we're gonna end right there. So we're just gonna do one continuous stitch all the way around, except we're not gonna do the bottom. We're just gonna go um, up the right side, around the top flap of the envelope and then down the left side. And then we're gonna lock the stitches at the beginning and at the end. So I noticed that I didn't cut um, the round edge on the envelope, I left it sharp and that was purely by accident. So just make sure that if you do want a rounded envelope flap, make sure that you cut it. <laughs> um, now you can always leave it. Um, the way I have it here. It's also very beautiful. And to be perfectly honest, if you're a beginner at sewing, I would recommend that you leave it straight and don't do the curve because um, the curve does require a little more experience. And, you know, even with my experience sewing a little bit, um, I haven't been at my sewing machine recently. And so even when I do this rounded um, flap, because I do, I do it anyway, even though I didn't cut it out, um, it's still tricky. And then when you don't cut it out and you just go by guess, it's also gonna be wonky. <laughs> so don't do that either. If you wanna do the curved edge, cut your curved edge so that you have something to follow. If you're just beginning, don't cu cut that curved edge. It'll be much easier for you to pause when your needle is in the craft text when you get to that, um, when you get to that turn. And then um, adjust your envelope and then continue sewing. It'll be much easier, trust me. So here I am just being careful with my back stitch, removing my wonder clips as I sew along. And then when I get to this um, middle part of the envelope, I also want to back stitch right here just to kind of reinforce that part of where the envelope opens. So I just wanna make sure that that part is reinforced. And make sure you go slow, um, only like you know two or three stitches, and then come forward. 
and then you're going to go ahead and go around the envelope flap. Now going around this envelope flap, we're not securing two pieces together. This is just one piece of craft text. But I just think um, I just think the design looks better when it's sewn um, all the way around like this. So completely up to you um, if you want to do this decorative part on the top, but I really like it. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, hmm, how am I going to go around this edge with no um, edge to follow? But I go for it, and I also had to pull my sewing machine away from the wall a little bit um, so that my craft text didn't bump the wall. So I'm going really slow because I'm realizing that I'm going to have to um, do this by eye. <laughs> and here we go with the curve. I mean, it didn't come out horrible, but it also didn't come out fantastic. And I like th for things to be fantastic. So next time, um, what I'll do is make sure that I have um, my envelope cut correctly and that I have something that I can follow. But I can go ahead and finish the rest of this. I'm just going to finish the rest of the flap and go down the right side and then lock in my stitch. And guess what? We're done at the sewing machine. Actually, I forget. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and do a back stitch once I pivot and turn. I'm going to do a back stitch right here just to reinforce this little part um, where we open the envelope. And then I'll go all the way down and then I'll reinforce it at the end. All right, let's take this sucker and let's wrinkle it up a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of an aged feel. Um, you can do this before you start sewing, before you start cutting. You could do it at any time, or you don't even have to do it at all. Um, to be honest, the envelope is going to get wear and tear as you use it anyway. But I think Craft Text looks really, really, really cool when um, it's a little vintage. <laughs> so you could even put this in your washing machine and wash it to get it soft or whatever you'd like, but I'm just kind of wrinkling, wrinkling it up just a tad here. Um, and then even if you wanted to, you could wrinkle it up and then iron it out. It will still kind of have those veins or like fingerprints. Um, I don't know what they call it in leather, but um, anyway, just those, those crease marks. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and um, trim around my curved edge on the flap. Um, I really should have done this prior to sewing, but I didn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. But before I do, I'm gonna make sure and clean up the edges as well. I'm just gonna take some scissors to them. Um, you can use your rotary if you want a really straight edge, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take some scissors. All right, so we're gonna walk over to my card making station and you can see that, I don't know, I guess my lighting is different here because all of a sudden my envelope turned a different color. <laughs> so weird. Um, and I came over here to this station too because I wanted my better scissors to do this curve. I did the size with just regular paper scissors, but here I, I grabbed my um, really nice Tim Holtz scissors, which by the way are my favorite um, for crafting, so. If you're on the hunt for some really good scissors, buy all three sizes of um, the Tim Holtz scissors. I'll make sure to link them below. So, um, you know, because I didn't have a guide when doing my rounded corner when I was sewing it, it's a little wonky. So I'm just gonna adjust um, the paper to the, to the line that I sewed. And no one will really know the difference that it's not necessarily even. I keep cutting just to kind of make it less noticeable. Um, and here I grab a different size of Tim Holtz scissors because, like I said, they're my favorite. <laughs> so just going to make that look um, better. It's not horrible, so it's not like this is going in the trash. Um, just a couple um, hints, you know, 
Um, you can do it fast like I did um, and make a couple of mistakes. I'm actually pretty rusty. I've made these before, but it's been a while and I wasn't going with any written instructions or anything like that. I was go just going based on memory. So I forgot a couple things, but that's the luxury of this video is you can watch this and then um, make corrections if necessary. So um, I still think that this video is very beneficial. Just a couple little um, things that I forgot to do um, in order. But as you can see, it all looks well. So um, we're just going to go ahead and continue with this. So I figured that I would do some um, distress inking on this. Um, I don't typically go for that look, but you know what? I am so glad that I did because this envelope turns out to be um, probably one of my favorite projects. It comes out really, really nice and feminine and vintage and beautiful. So I have no regrets and that's why this video is making it to YouTube. <laughs> so I'm just taking um, a couple of my Distress Oxides that are on the pinkish side. Um, and I have my blending tool there. I'll be sure to put um, all the information in the description below this video. So if you want that information, check that out. But I'm just getting a couple of my pinks. I'm grabbing my Multimedia Mat by Waffle Flower. This is really great. I have this large one and I also have the mini one too um, because they really come in handy. It's this really nice silicone. It's heat resistant. You could use watercolors on it. You can use your distress oxides. And because it's this silicone, um, your paper stays in place when you're rubbing on your ink and doing your ink blending. So these um, media mats are just fantastic. I really recommend them. And I also really have to have both the mini one and the big one. Um, but anyway, I'm taking this piece that I, this kind of scrap piece of card, of craft text, and I'm just doing a sampling of this, um, Victorian velvet ink by Tim Holtz, Distress uh, Oxide. And I wanted to test that first on the craft text to see if it's something that I was going to like, because I grabbed some other pinks as well, but um, sure enough, um, Victorian Velvet for the win, for sure, because it's just absolutely beautiful. But of course, I had to be sure. So if you do decide to use Distress Inks or really anything, um, use your scrap craft text um, as your test, because you don't want to ruin your project. Um, so you'll see me use that piece um, pretty often during this process um, when I start stamping and stuff like that. That way I can just um, be assured that it's something that I'm going to like to put on my project. So I'm just wiping this down. Microfiber cloth is also a really important tool on my card making desk. Um, we're not making a card here, but we're using a lot of the supplies that I do use for card making. So. Um, I'm also going to bring out this tacky tile. This is by the Stamp Market. It is a wonderful tool if you're a stamper because what it does is it has this um, sticky film on the bottom. It's acrylic on the top and then it's sticky at the bottom. And I haven't used this one, so I have a little trouble um, removing the release film, but I'll grab my handy dandy um, Creative Memories all purpose tool. I'll go ahead and link that below too because it's like having like an extra fingernail. It gets right into things that you normally can't reach with your fingernails and it's just such a great tool. You can see I can um, get this um, protective um, sheet off by using that um, Creative Memories tool. So anyway, I just take this off and then you can stick it to any surface. You can see I even stick it onto my silicone mat and it doesn't go anywhere. And then you put your Distress Oxide and it really, really doesn't go anywhere. It's really awesome. I bought it for um, my Distress Oxides and for my mini inks by Lawn Fawn. So as you can see, I don't have to get my hands that dirty because my Distress Oxide ink pad is basically attached to my tabletop. So I don't have to grab it and hold on to it while I'm grabbing more ink, as you can see there. I mean, granted, my hands still get dirty because we are ink blending, <laughs> but they don't get as dirty um, because my, stamp, my ink pad stays nice and put right there. So I know they have a patent pending for these um, tiles. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Kudos to them because this is a really, really great tool. So I'm just inking up um, the edges for now. Um, I love this blush pink. It's just, it's so pretty. I mean, it started, this project started out by just using that blush pink um, 
um, pale pink thread. Um, so when I came and decided I wanted to do a little bit of distress inking, I thought, okay, a pale pink would be perfect because I started out with that thread. So again, just a little ink blending all the way around. Um, yeah, fun stuff. So pretty, right? I love it. I think it came out so good. So I wouldn't be a very good junk journaler because I keep wanting to clean my hands <laughs> just from getting the little bit of ink on it. All right, so taking a little bit of water and I'm just about to clean my media mat when I think, ooh, look at all that pretty wet ink. And again, I grab my scrap piece and I dab a little bit off with my microfiber cloth and I'm thinking, mm-hmm, I shall pick up all this wet ink with my project to add a little more distressing. So I normally don't get this messy, but you know what? <laughs> Gotta roll up my sleeves. Um, I'm not even upset that I did. It looks really, really, really cool. So now I'm getting the whole junk journaling thing. I mean, I get why, I mean, I it's beautiful. It's just, it's so hard for me because it's, it's pretty messy. Um, and I'm on, I'm, I'm kind of more on the neat, um, borderline perfectionist type crafter. And so, um, it's a little hard for me, but you know what? Look, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> then I got to clean it up. <laughs> so, um, it turns out really nice. I really, I really like it. So I'm glad, I'm glad I did that. So this is going to be my little, um, vintage or Victorian velvet kind of rustic vintage blushy envelope. <laughs> much different, much different for me, but, um, I'm glad. I think this goes really, really well, and I'm excited for you guys um, to see what I did. So just a little more cleaning up. If you're wondering why I have an O on my um, ink blender there, that's because um, I have ink blenders and blending brushes for my oxides, so that's what the O is for. And then I have it for my regular inks, and on those I have an I for the pigment inks. Or for the, I'm sorry, dye inks. Then I'm just going to add this protective um, sheet back to my tile or tacky tile and put it back in its package and then put it with the rest of my tools for my card making. But isn't that pretty cool? Very, very, very cool tool. Um, next time I visit the stamp market, I'm going to go ahead and grab the regular um, ink pad um, tacky tile as well. So um, uh, I felt like my envelope was a little bit wet and I wanted to continue, so I'm just plugging in my Tim Holtz heat tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, heat my envelope just a little bit, just to make sure that it's good enough to go for my next steps. All right, now for some stamps and dies. So I went ahead and went into my floral category. I kind of want to see what I have. Um, you know, since this is feeling a little Victorian, vintagey, I thought florals would be perfect. So I'm just going to grab um, a couple um, potential stamps and dies here in my floral department. And then I'm also going to grab some from um, my happy mail categories because I'm kind of thinking floral, postcard, um, deliver to some postage stamps and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go through my stash and then um, we will see what I'll be using. All right, so I grabbed my Tim Holtz stamp positioning tool. Um, I was gonna stamp directly um, on my envelope, but you never know if I need more ink. Um, using a stamp positioning tool is really convenient. So I'll just, I'll show you in a bit how I use that. But um, I'm gonna grab a bow stamp um, off this stamp set. And I, again, have my little tester sheet here. It already has my ink that I um, tested out. And I'm gonna try out different pinks to see what color stamp ink I wanna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use Distress Inks. Um, a lot of people think that Distress Inks and Distress Oxides are just for um, distressing. But you can also use them to stamp too. It's a different look, but I think for this envelope, I think it's gonna be the perfect look. 
So I try this, I think this one's worn lipstick and it's just a little too bright. So the way I clean my stamps is just with a microfiber cloth right after I've inked them. I don't let it dry. I um, wipe them clean pretty quickly. So um, that way I don't have to use water. And then sometimes if I feel it's really stubborn, I'll go ahead and spritz it with water and clean it with my microfiber. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this Victorian Velvet. And if you'll remember, this is what we ink blended with. So a lot of times tone on tone looks really, really, really beautiful. So we're gonna try this out and yep, I love it. I think it looks really beautiful. The tone on tone is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with um, Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide ink, even for my stamping. So i um, gonna clean that off um, because I'm not gonna use that bow. I'm probably gonna use some other ones. So we're gonna put this one back. So I probably won't link um, this particular um, set. Actually, I'll let you know what it is though. It's Simon Says Stamp Nutty Over You stamp set. <laughs> Um, I won't link it below because I'm not going to use it after all. That was just a quick tester. But um, I will be using this beautiful one. It's Simon Says Stamp again, and it's called Floral Bliss. And I think this will be a nice choice for the envelope flap. And so just when I thought, oh, maybe I should just directly stamp it using an acrylic block, lucky for me, and I mean this, again, this, is tu this tutorial is full of wonderful lessons for you. So lucky for me, the acrylic block wasn't big enough. So I end up um, using the stamp positioning tool just like I should because it's right there, why not use it? Um, and I use it and sure enough, um, because this is a larger stamp, I didn't get even pressure all the way around. And so because I used a stamp positioning tool, I'm able to re-ink and re-stamp in the exact same place. So that is what is that is the beauty of a stamp positioning tool is being able to re-ink and stamp in the exact same place. So if you do have a stamp positioning tool, I recommend that you use it, especially if you are going to be stamping um, a larger stamp like this floral one that I'm using. You're gonna see right now um, why it's important to have um, a stamp positioning tool in your arsenal of tools. And I'll go ahead and I'll link this one below. I also have the Misty. I have the regular size Misty. I have a mini Misty. And then I have this Tim Holtz one. They are all fantastic. The reason why I reached for the Tim Holtz one is because I know that my envelope is larger than my platform and it's a lot easier with the Tim Holtz platform. With the Misty, um, it's harder to get oversized images into that platform. And here we go. Here's our first stamp. And I'm just using my fiber, microfiber cloth just to get try and get some even pressure. And then I, you know, it's pretty light. So boy, am I glad I have the stamp in the positioning tool. Cause you can see I ink it up again and I can stamp it over and over and over and over and over and over again until I get the saturation that I want um, because I'm using this tool. And another thing, you know, normally when I ink up my stamp, when I'm using a stamp positioning tool, <laughs> pretty excited about that. Um, when I'm when I'm inking it up, if I do get ink um, on that um, uh, that piece that's swinging back and forth, I did wipe it a little bit. And the only reason, usually I don't have to do that, but the reason why I did for this project is because I wrinkled up that envelope and um, I was afraid that there may be some high and low places of that envelope because I crinkled it. And so I didn't want to get ink anywhere else but where I have the stamp. So that's why on occasion you will see me clean off the glass of the stamp positioning tool if I did have excess around the stamp. Um, but normally with a stamp positioning tool you wouldn't have to worry about that. I just have to worry about it because I wrinkled my paper. So I think that came out really pretty. Again, I love the tone on tone. The tone on tone is just perfect. Now I don't want this to smudge, um, so I'm going ahead and I'm using my um, Ranger heat tool just to kind of set that a little bit. Um, because I'm using oxides, um, they are um, 
more uh, like a pigment ink so they stay wet for a little while so you can emboss it if you wanted to if you wanted to add embossing powder it would be wonderful um, I didn't for this project so I wanted to heat set that oxide ink a little bit before I continued any further because I just I didn't want to mess it up I just thought it was so pretty really didn't want to mess it up all right so I went um, and grabbed some more stamps kind of messed around with them decided not to use them and um, settled on this lawn fawn rolled roses um, again I'm taking my scrap piece I wanted to try this out um, either way I would have had to use the scrap piece if I decide to keep this rose but um, I wanted to see how well it cut also so before you cut into your craft text envelope your actual project like if you wanted to do a cutout um, on the flap or you know anywhere else make sure you test um, craft text before you actually cut into your project just to make sure it cuts all the way through so I'm gonna go ahead and run um, the smaller rolled rows um, into my electronic die cutting machine I use a Anna Griffin Empress and I happen to be using the mini I have the the large one and the mini one so I'm gonna just run this through and hope for the best <laughs> no I'm just kidding I run it through twice just to make sure because the craft text you know it's thick and you know if it can withstand the washing and drying and the wear and tear I was like hmm how confident am I that I, a die cut is gonna cut on the first try and to tell you the truth I didn't even look at it I was like mmm I'm gonna run this through I didn't peel it up I was like I'm gonna run this through a second time just to be sure because I I knew I didn't have a whole lot of scrap to work with so um, it worked out <laughs> it worked out and we got a nice little um, rolled rose with a little bit of effort here. Um, and this is the first time I made this. And um, I had to kind of take a look at it and try and figure it out. Um, and thanks to this demo here, I'm going to show you how you do it. And I'm not sure if this is the right way, but I sure like the way it came out. So, um absolutely can use um, metal cutting dies with your craft text as you can see um, getting my glue ready for when I roll that rose that it's ready for me to position it wherever I decide to position it and again I told you I'm a pretty neat crafter so we got to get some things out of the way <laughs> on my tabletop here all right we ready to roll this rose I think it's going to take take a couple of tries before I get it but we're going to get it All right, so it took a lot of finagling, but basically I started from the center and then rolled around and then finagled it and finagled it and finagled it. And this little piece that would be on, actually that is the very, very center, um, that gets glued down to the bottom and glued to all the layers of the rose. So I'm just gonna hold it there for a little bit. Um, I'm using a pretty strong glue. Again, I'll link it below and I'll also link that precision tip applicator. And then I'm smashing down the petals of the rose a little bit. I don't know why I did that, but um, it seemed to make sense and it turned out really nice. <laughs> so just gonna do a little bit of smushing while that um, glue is setting holding it in place a little bit so it will set. Just a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Yeah, folding back those petals, I just think it makes it look really pretty. And I might even put something there in the center. I'm not sure yet. But look at how pretty that is, a nice little 3D floret. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of um, the Distress Oxide to it because I felt like it needed um, a little more color. Can you hear that dog? That That's my neighbor's dog. And I feel so sorry for him. I wanna bring him into my house. I think he's lonely. So he just kinda at night, he, um, he barks and howls and I just really want to be his best friend, but my husband is allergic, so 
that will not happen. <laughs> but you'll hear them every now and then in my videos. So I'm going to heat set that because it's pretty wet. And then um, put it aside. Oh, pretty. And now for positioning. I think it's going to be perfect right at um, the end of that envelope flap. I think that will be perfect. And I decided instead of using my glue, um, even though it's very strong and fast drying, I thought, you know what? I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. Um, Fabri-Tac is my favorite um, permanent permanent adhesive for fabric. So I thought, you know what, if this goes through the wash, I really, really, oh, I didn't even think about the wash actually. Because if I wash this envelope, um, I definitely need to use Fab Fabri-Tac. So make sure you use Fabri-Tac. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm taking these um, detailed leaves and I thought my rose needed a little company, needed a little bit of leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and die cut some leaves for my rose. By the way, the leaves, they're by Simon Says Stamp and they're called um, Detailed Elm Leaves. Very, 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 very beautiful leaves. I love all the detail. Oh, pretty, look at that. That is so pretty, I am so happy with that. I love, 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 love it. I think it's perfect. I'm gonna um, step away and grab a larger Wonder Clip just to um, clip that in place and make sure that it adheres really, really, really well. So we'll leave that for a bit and we'll look through the stamp stash to find, um, what, else, to find what other trouble we can get into. Um, this is when I dive into my Happy Mail stamps. Ooh, those ones make me so happy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Don't mess up. <laughs> I'm using the Stamp Market. I'm gonna go ahead and use these Stamp Gram stamps. I packaged them with my postcard die um, because they kind of go together, kind of. Anyway, um, this is such a wonderful set. It's got a great vintage feel. Um, kind of old um, postcard type stamps, a wonderful font. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, use this vintage text message stamp. I think it's super appropriate for this envelope and since I'm giving it a um, post, uh, kind of post mail type um, vibe, I thought this would be just perfect. So we're gonna make sure we get our um, envelope placed in place and secure with some magnets. And then we'll get to stamping. And this was a little nerve wracking because at any point I could mess up my envelope and want to start all over again. That's kind of the type of crafter that I am. Um, but it goes okay, it goes okay. Again, a lot of um, credit goes to this stamp positioning tool because um, it really makes things easier. And I just love the way the excess of the envelope can just hang off the platform. It's not as easy with the Misty. So if you do larger projects, I definitely recommend the Tim Holtz stamp platform. So I considered um, Tone on Tone with Victorian Velvet again. Um, 
but I love that it said vintage text message and I really wanted it to stand out. I didn't want it to blend into the paper too much the way the florals did. I think the florals look really nice blending in um, to the flap, but this, I wanted it to um, stand out a little bit more. So I'm messing around with some um, browns, um, like vintage photo and things like that. Um, they're off camera. <laughs> um, trying to think. If I go gray, do I go brown? Do I do the tone on tone? Just um, pretty undecided. So ultimately, I decide to go, I believe with this one, the walnut stain. Yeah, walnut stain, that sounds perfect. So I don't know why my lid was so hard to take off, but um, it came off, but I don't know, it's got some like gook, like it needs to be cleaned. Anyway, so walnut stain it is. And you see me pressing on the stamp. That is because, uh, with my palm, that is because um, it hadn't been used yet and I wanted to prime it. And that's the way I prime it. <laughs> I, put my, I put my hands all over it. So again, you see the excess ink on the door of the stamp platform. The only reason I'm wiping that way away is because I'm using a wrinkled envelope. If you're just stamping on flat cardstock, you do not have to clean up the excess ink. That's another wonderful thing about um, platforms. But because my envelope is wrinkled, um, I get a little nervous. And so I go ahead and I, I wipe that excess ink away. So again, see how um, I don't have a lot of ink on my envelope. I want it to be a little darker, a little more saturated, even though that looks kind of cool for a vintage look. I am able to stamp again and again in the exact same position. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. The stamp set is so good. Look at that. Ah, an envelope, a vintage text message. That's kind of <laughs> sad to think that an envelope and snail mail is considered vintage. I don't know, something about that is wrong, but it is a really cute sentiment. And again, just clean it off with my microfiber cloth and put it away. So for those of you who are hesitant about stamping, thinking it's messy, it doesn't have to be. Um, you can clean your stamp right away. It's not like you have to go to your kitchen sink and rinse them off and do all that stuff. A microfiber cloth right after you stamped will clean them just fine. I love that. So happy. All right, what kind of trouble are we gonna get into next? Look at that. Oh, so happy. And again, this envelope is gonna get softer. As I use it, it'll get soft, softer. It won't be as rigid and weird. I think that's dry. I love that detailed leaf. You know, that rolled flower from Lawn Fawn, it did come with some leaves, but um, just not as pretty as I wanted. You may have noticed I almost went for the wrong stamp. <laughs> this is the one that I wanted by the stamp market, Envelope Accents. This is the one that I wanted. Um, I almost went with just some lines for the um, address indicator. But no, I wanted this vintage label lined one looking. <laughs> so thank goodness I remembered about this one. So I swapped them out. Just getting this into position. And then I will pick up the stamp with the door. And then swing it back open to ink it. And I decided for this one, tone on tone will be perfect. All right, so I went back and forth with the deliver um, two part and I decided to go with um, the Stamp Market Stamp Gram. Um, it's the same, same stamp set that had the vintage text message. So, um, but I'm not wanting the vertical line that normally would go on in the middle of a postcard and then I didn't want the two part. So I'm just masking that off so I don't get ink on that part 
and then I'll ink up my stamp and then I will peel off that mask and go ahead and stamp it onto my project. I just wanted the deliver with care and then the um, the line that's right under with care, I just wanted that part stamped on there. And again, I'm just going with the tone on tone. Now, if I were to go directly to stamp like this, I'd get ink everywhere. So you do wanna make sure that you remove your mask. Perfect. <laughs> ah, so pretty and delicate. I love it. It just says deliver with care and I was able to avoid using the rest of that stamp. All right, so we're going to go ahead and rotate the project and I'm going to work on the last of the stamping. We're almost done. All right. Um, what shall we I'm going to go next? ahead and do some <laughs> postage stamps such stamps. great stamp sets and that um, the postage stamp I got from the let's see which stamp set it's uh, the envelope one where is it here it is it's from the stamp market envelope accents I'm using the really pretty botanical 30 cent um, vintage looking stamp and I stamp um, two of them so I could have two stamps on the envelope. And what's a stamp without cancellation? <laughs> Gotta have the cancellation from the mailman. So I am using, uh, let's see, the stamp market. It just said it right there and it went away. Here it is, uh, mailbox messages. And I'm using the Happy Mail um, round stamp. It's so cute. It says Happy Mail and it has a heart in the middle. It's just perfect. And so for the cancellation, I decided to go back to Walnut Stain and do a little bit of a co contrast. So the stamps are a tone on tone and then a little bit of Walnut Stain um, for the um, circular Happy Mail kind of cancellation looking thingy. Perfection. Didn't even need to stamp it twice, so that's always nice. And then I'm gonna grab um, the cancellation waves from the Stamp Market Stamp Gram. And again, that's the stamp set that had the vintage text message and the deliver with care stamps that I used. So I'm using three stamps from this stamp set. And there we go. I absolutely love the way that came out. I think using those two colors um, was a good idea. <laughs> now for a little bit of cleanup and then I'll show you the final result. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Poor baby, I want him to come over. Okay, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Look at this. Look at my Happy Mail stamp. Look at the poster stamps. Look at the deliver with care um, label. Look at the envelope flap. Look at the 3D flower. Look at the vintage text message. Oh my gosh, it just makes me so, so happy that I can't stop just when I thought I was done. Lies. All lies. I have to do a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and push the envelope. Get it? Push the envelope. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit more. So let's grab these metallic, um, I don't know how to say what they're called, but they're like watercolor um, metallics and they're absolutely gorgeous. I'll link them below. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna do some uh, metallic ink splatter to this envelope. 
I know, I thought I was done, but what can I say? I'm not. I'm gonna use the champagne gold. I'm gonna spritz a little bit of water in there. Having um, a spray bottle of water is very handy in your card making station, by the way. I know we're not making a card, but we are using an envelope. Then I'm gonna grab this paintbrush that I have, kind of mix it up in there, get that water into that metallic. And then I'm just gonna hit the brush against my finger and splatter that sucker everywhere just for some um, sparkle. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot about the closure. So I opted for Velcro strips. Uh, there are Velcro dots, actually. Um, I can't remember where I got these, but I will check my past orders on Amazon and see if they are there so I can link them below. But they're really handy, and it comes with like a million of them in one package. Not really a million, but pretty close. Um, and so I'm just going to use this as my envelope seal. Um, I have snaps, I have cam snaps, and I have... Um, like brass snaps and some other really pretty snaps that I use for these envelopes. But because of the 3D rose, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with this because we have to have an envelope closure, right? Maybe it would have been better if I would have done like those old school envelope closures with the string that you kind of go in a figure eight to secure it. Um, but no. I have a rose there, so we're not gonna go that route. So I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac just to secure this, again, in case it goes through the wash. I wanna make sure it doesn't like fall off. <laughs> so we're gonna use a little bit of Fabri-Tac, and then now I promise you we really are nearing completion. Here it is. Here it is, the final result. I love it. I love the gold splatter. I love the Happy Meal. I love the florals. I love the vintage sentiment. I love the 3D flower. I love the Velcro. I love the envelope. I loved the whole process. It was a little nerve wracking because I really didn't know what I was doing, but um, I love the way it turned out. So, um, that's some good advice. Just keep going. Just keep going. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I might add a little more Distress Ink around the edges of the pink. Um, but other than that, look at how beautiful that came out. Thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you at the next video.